Okay, welcome, dear student. Now our next topic of chapter number fourteen: refraction of light. That is prism. What is prism? You have seen. This is the prism. How to define it? A refracting medium which is consisted of two triangular and three rectangular surfaces. is called prism it is a reflecting medium because it is made by transparent glass look at this one is triangular surface and this one is also triangular surface these are two triangular surfaces and this one is rectangular surface this one is also rectangular surface and this is the base also rectangular surface so these surfaces are bounded and makes the prism it reflects the rays of light now it turns the rays of light from 90 degree to 180 degree look at 90 degree if we will add an other prism like this that will be also 90 degree so it becomes 180 degree number 2 it splits the sunlight into its seven color sunlight is split by the prism into its seven colors so this prism is used for splitting of sunlight next path of the ray of light through prism how the ray of light incident and refracted and out of the prism so this is the way this one is incident ray it is incident on this point and enters the prism it is deviated mean it changes its path so it is refracted ray and out of the prism into the same medium that is called emergent ray now incident ray refracted ray and emergent ray the this is the normal on this surface of the prism normal mean angle of 90 degree so the angle between incident ray and normal is called angle of incident and this is refracted ray and this one is these dotted lines are normal so the angle between refracted ray and normal is called angle of refraction next when the ray comes out from the prism if we draw the normal on this surface mean angle of 90 degree so the angle between normal and emergent ray is called angle of emergent so these are three angle angle of incident angle of refraction and angle of emergent now the third one fourth one is angle of deviation if we brought forward the incident ray and brought backward the emergent ray both the rays intersect at this point this angle is called angle of deviation you can define these angles as angle of incident angle between incident ray and normal angle of refraction angle between refracted ray and normal angle of emergent angle between emergent ray and normal angle of prism this one is the angle of prism and opposite side of the prism is called base so this is the base of the prism and this one is angle of prism now angle of deviation the angle formed at the intersecting point of incident ray brought forward and emergent ray brought backward is called angle of deviation it is denoted by angle d you can make the angle of deviation from this side this is angle of deviation if you want to measure it you can measure from this side this is also angle of deviation because these are alternate angle both are equal you want to measure from any side 
Next, types of prism. There are two types of prism. First, common prism. Second, total internal reflecting prism. Common prism, the prism having all the angles 60 degree is called common prism. Look at the diagram. All these three angles are of 60 degree. It is known as common prism. Uses of this prism is it is used in laboratories for practical purpose. It is used in dispersion of light. These are commonly two uses of common prism. Next, number two, total internal reflecting prism. The prism having one angle of 90 degree and other two of 45 degree is called total internal reflecting prism. So, there is one is a prism. This angle is right angle mean angle of 90 degree and this one is 45 degree. This one is also 45 degree. So, this prism is called total internal reflecting prism. Now, it is uses. It is used to turn the ray of light at 90 degree in periscope in submarine. Periscope is a device which is used in submarine to, to view the target on the surface or into the sea of into the sea. Number two, it is used in electronic microscope. Number three, it is used for total internal reflection of light. Look at the diagram. This one is total internal reflecting prism. This ray is incident ray. It, it, it is incident on the surface at 90 degree. As you have read before that when the ray of light striking at 90 degree, it will not refract it. It will not deviate. It will not change its path and velocity. So, it passes into the prism in a straight line. This side is having angle of 45 degree. So, the ray strikes on this surface at 45 degree. Because the angle of glass is 42 degree. When the angle increases from 42 degree, total internal reflection takes place, no refraction. So this is 45 degree, it is greater than 42. So the ray of light will strike this surface at 90 degree and at 90 degree no reflection takes place, the ray of light goes straight. Look at, this is the turning of 90 degree. If you will add another prism, it will be turned again at 90 degree, so 180 degree turn. So this prism is used in periscope. Now this process is called total internal reflection because the critical angle of glass is 42 degree. If the angle increases from this limit, Instead of refraction, refraction takes place. We will study these topics, total internal reflection of light in other chapter, other class. Okay. You have to draw these diagrams and learn this path because this diagram is also used in your practical. Okay. Thank you.